Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our virtual College of Liberal Arts during our virtual UTSA Day experience. Um, we will we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Angie Rodriguez. I'm an admissions counselor for the Austin region. Um, I will be your moderator and host for this morning, and my job will be to kind of just keep rolling. Um, we'd like to take a quick second to say that we know how um, COVID-19 has changed our world in both big and small ways, um, including the way we interact with not only strangers, but also with our friends and loved ones. Um, with that in mind, please know how thankful we are that you are joining us this morning. Um, at this time, I would like to transition into starting the College of Liberal and Fine Arts session and the opportunity to introduce our presenter for this session, um, Dr. Stephen Levick, a professor and associate dean for the College of Liberal and Fine Arts. Um, Dr. Levick will provide you with everything you need to know from beginning to end about the College of Liberal and Fine Arts. Um, I will be monitoring monitoring the chat box for popular questions to share during our Q&A portion um, throughout the session and at the end of the session as well. Um, it is about 45 minutes to one hour. Um, should you have any questions during that time, you can either save them until the end or feel free to use uh, to utilize a chat box um, we talked about earlier. So um, the chat box is if you just click on the screen um, and you click the little um, blue bubble, it kind of looks like a bubble that will just kind of appear um, and you'll be able to answer or to ask any questions that you might have. Um, so just a quick reminder, if you're joining us, please mute your microphone and turn your cameras off uh, so that we can have a smooth presentation. So we'll go ahead and let Dr. Levitt um, start the presentation. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you here for this virtual version of uh, UTSA Today. Uh, UTSA Day. I wish we could be uh, together uh, in person, um, but uh, we can't do that. So we're going to do it this way. And uh, I'm certainly hoping that this finds you and all of your loved ones well. And we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, what I'd like to do first is uh, let you know that we have uh, these nine different departments in the College of Liberal and Fine Arts that you see on your screen. So if you're interested in psychology, or sociology or public health. They are no longer in the College of Liberal and Fine Arts. They have been moved to a new college, College for Health, Community and Policy. So if you're interested in those disciplines, psychology, sociology and public health, then you probably want to go ahead and um, switch over, uh, go to your schedule and switch over. And I see a, a, a message in the chat feature asking if I can turn my volume up. I'll speak louder if that helps. Um, I don't know if I can turn my volume up, but I will certainly speak louder. So again, it's a pleasure to be with you today. My name is Dr. Steve Levitt, and as Angie said, I'm a professor in the communication department. That's my home discipline. And I also serve as associate dean for undergraduate studies in the College of Liberal and Fine Arts. And I've been at UTSA for 29 years. So I've been a long time here, and I love UTSA. Uh, I wouldn't stay around that long if I didn't love it. So I certainly hope you'll give us uh, some serious thought about joining us uh, this summer or this fall. Um, this would be a good time to write down my email address, stephen.levitt at utsa.edu. I certainly encourage you to email me with any questions that you have that we aren't able to answer during today's session. Or if you uh, do some more research and uh, questions arise later, I'm certainly happy <clears throat> to interact with you. And if you'd like to talk with me by phone, that would be great too. If, as long as you provide me with a telephone number when you email me, I'd be happy to give you a call back. I'll either answer your questions or I will uh, forward them to our department chairs or our undergraduate advisors in the departments uh, or other uh, discipline specialists that can give you more detail about certain things if I can't answer them thoroughly enough. We wanna make sure that you have all the information that you need uh, to make a really good decision about what we have to offer here at UTSA. <clears throat> so again, you'll see the departments and the major uh, degree programs that we have in anthropology, art and art history, communication, English, history, modern languages and literatures, music, philosophy and classic, political science and geography. <clears throat> I will be speaking specifically about each of those uh, departments and degree programs that they offer as we go through the presentation, but I'd like to start off first just giving you some general information about the College of Liberal and Fine Arts. 
And I will put this slide back up at the very end of the presentation in case you didn't get a chance to write down either our uh, <clears throat> POLFA website or my email address. <clears throat> So COLFA, College of Liberal and Fine Arts is the most diverse college at UTSA because we have uh, many different kinds of disciplines. We have the fine arts, we have the humanities, and we have several social science disciplines as well. So <clears throat> we have quite an eclectic group of scholars and faculty members and students. And as you'll uh, hear throughout the course of this presentation, uh, we do a lot of interdisciplinary work. We do a lot of cross-listing of courses so that anthropology students and history students and maybe students minoring in museum studies are taking the same classes um, with different title, uh, not titles, but different uh, discipline prefixes and getting credit for the same class for their, the discipline that they need the credit for for their degree requirements. So we've really integrated all of our programs quite nicely and you'll, you'll get a sense of that as we continue. Um, serve over 4,500 majors, I uh, mentioned nine departments. In those nine departments, we have 24 different majors and 29 different minors. We produce about 30% of all the UTSA credit hours, and that is because we have the majority of the core curriculum courses that students are required to take in the College of Liberal and Fine Arts. Uh, so it's really almost impossible for a student to graduate in any degree in UTSA without being touched by our college. And frankly, uh, many students <clears throat> uh, get interested in liberal and fine arts after they take one of our courses in the core curriculum and they switch majors, which we're happy to have you if you decide that uh, your initial major that you uh, thought you might be interested in is not exactly what you wanted and you, and, uh, you decide that something else in college of liberal and fine arts would be more suitable. <clears throat> I'll be talking a little bit more about our signature experience, all the majors are required to graduate with a capstone course that combines theory that they're using in the classroom with some sort of practical experience that people can put on their resume and so forth. Uh, and then we also offer many scholarships. I like to point that out. We have both scholarships at the college level and we have scholarships within each of our departments. Uh, of course, there's general UTS scholarships as well. So um, we have something called a scholarship hub and I'm sure that's, <clears throat> I hope, very easily uh, accessible through our uh, UTSA website. So I encourage you to go to the Scholarship Hub and explore the kind of scholarships that we offer that will help you finance your education. And uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about study abroad as well. And that's another opportunity to uh, help finance a study abroad experience. Now, I know many parents and often the students as well are wondering about why should we study liberal arts? What kind of jobs are my uh, student, is a student going to get in classics or in philosophy or in English or history, uh, one of these, uh, you know, uh, art or, or humanities disciplines? And so I would challenge you to Google what I have here, the value of liberal arts education, and you'll see how many articles discuss the attributes that employers are seeking that are consistent with the education that students get in liberal and fine arts. Um, and I really encourage you to do some reading about that. Here is what my uh, search turned up uh, when I did that, the unexpected value of liberal arts education. Yes, employers do value liberal arts degrees. Uh, more articles, and these are recent articles about uh, the value of liberal arts, uh, economic gains, and so forth. So please, uh, you know, I don't have enough time to go through all of that today, but I would encourage you to, to just Google that and, and do a little reading on these articles. College of Liberal and Fine Arts is really about the humanities, what makes us human, where we have been, in other words, our history, and what bonds us together as humans, the fine arts, music, language, and literature, shared cultural values, relationships. Also, how we can advance and improve as humans, in other words, the social sciences. So, in an era where the STEM fields are too often, you know, touted as more important than the liberal and fine arts, our college is fo focuses on questions about science, technology, and nature, and why they matter. Things like ethics and moral reflection, empathy and compassion, equity and justice, in short, overall global social well-being. 
Now, we do offer a number of marketable skills. Our college, all of the majors offer these, uh, include and incorporate these four principal skills, among others, uh, obviously critical thinking, problem solving, global and intercultural fluency, oral or written communications, and teamwork collaborations. These are often considered soft skills in the industry, and they, those are some of the attributes that employers are looking for, and you can read about those in, that, in those articles that I suggested. Um, we have recruiters that work in financial industries and in other in industries that purposely come to recruit liberal and fine arts majors as opposed to, say, somebody in the College of Business or Engineering or Sciences because they know that our students are getting these types of skills that are really transferable to so many different kinds of occupations and careers. <clears throat> One other thing that I would really encourage you all to do is uh, go <clears throat> to our Career Center website. There you'll find a great deal of information about careers and so forth in different disciplines in the College of Liberal and Fine Arts. That's an excellent clearinghouse. Um, I'm going to give another little plug for the Career uh, Center. If you decide to come to UTSA, I really urge you to get in touch with them and go uh, talk with those folks at the Career Center right away when you're a freshman. Don't wait till you're a junior or senior because they offer so many things in terms of <clears throat> preparing you for careers, resume uh, writing workshops, interviewing workshops, uh, aptitude tests, our job bank, internships, uh, just a, a plethora of different services that they offer, um, including things like uh, a wardroom closet. In other words, if students can't afford or they don't have a suit or, a, or a, a professional dress to wear for a job interview that you can go and borrow one for free there and just bring it back and have it uh, dry clean. So there's a, many, many different opportunities there and I would encourage you to check out the Career Center as well. <clears throat> so we're very proud that all of our disciplines incorporate all of these different uh, marketable skills and we emphasize them to the point that students are able to articulate these and how they've, uh, how they've learned them in uh, interviews and so forth and learning how to do uh, elevator pitches um, in terms of how, they, how they've operationalized these. Now, of course, these are uh, addressed in different ways um, in different disciplines. Problem solving is very different in music composition than in, say, in improving some kind of an organizational teamwork environment which is my area of expertise, how to incorporate backstory and creative writing or crafting effective uh, health related messages during like a current pandemic. So uh, they're operationalized in different ways, but all of our disciplines focus on these uh, marketable skills. I mentioned earlier the uh, signature experience. They all graduate with a capstone experience that involves practical application um, in a professional setting. And we do that through internships. We have capstone projects for clients, for example, in the public relations uh, concentration in my discipline communication uh, at, at, uh, campaigns course at the end of the uh, degree program uh, works on a project for a real client, typically a nonprofit organization and comes up with an entire campaign plan for how to address the organization's goals and objectives. Um, and those those uh, uh, projects are presented to the client at the end of the semester and the client can implement those strategies and tactics and often our students then uh, get jobs with those companies if they do a really good job. Uh, many other different types of service and experiential learning opportunities. Study abroad is another really, really uh, effective uh, signature experience that I'm going to uh, promote because it's such a great opportunity for students to um, see uh, a different part of the world and, and a different way of thinking and it's just really a rich experience. And then we have many undergraduate research and creative activities uh, as well. Um, our faculty members work very hard to include our undergraduates as well as our graduate students of course in research projects where they can get that kind of practical experience and of course in the fine arts <clears throat> it would be more uh, art exhibits and, and musical uh, performances and so forth, but I'll get to those a little bit more later. Um, again, I mentioned the undergraduate research opportunities. This is our 20th annual spring research conference that we run. Fortunately, we had to cancel the in-person uh, part of that uh, because it was scheduled uh, for late March, um, but we do this every year and students uh, have an opportunity to present their scholarly work uh, or their creative activities in uh, as in a real conference setting 
with faculty member uh, moderators and judges. We award prizes for the uh, judged best research projects and best creative activities. And everybody that participates in that, as well as others who are nominated by faculty for doing extraordinary uh, research activities that are outside the scope of normal classrooms, are inducted into the Academy of Undergraduate Research Associates. And I'm just about ready to, um, to um, uh, send out those letters and those certificates to uh, the uh, candidates this year, it's something great to put on their resume and so forth. Um, sorry, I'm not, oh, there we go, okay. Um, let me talk a lot about student organizations. Uh, here's a, a, a few, the debate of the Public Relations Student Society of America, the French Club, Anthropological Society. These are just a, high, a few that we had in the Colorado and Fine Arts. UTSA has over 500 registered student organizations. Uh, they're categorized into about 20 different types. So you can see there when you go to this uh, uh, website, uh, Rowdy Link uh, Organizations, You'll be able to select from about 20 different types from academic organizations, cultural and political and religious and spiritual to hobbies such as hiking and hip hop dancing. So all COFA majors have academic based student organizations as well as others. Um, and you can browse by type or you can see the entire list by continuing to click load more here. They're uh, presented alphabetically and when you click load more uh, additional ones will come up and if you continue to click that more and more you can read about them. Um, it's been very well uh, documented that being active in campus organizations and other extracurricular activities improves your academic success, retention, and graduation rates. Um, initially, you have an instant group of friends who share common interests with you, whether it be uh, some discipline like anthropology or some hobby like cooking or, or something like that. Um, and that can be very helpful for a student who comes from out of town and, and arrives on campus, you know, not really knowing anybody. It can be a little uh, intimidating being on such a large campus with some 30,000 students, but an instant group of, of friends and so forth and study mates, uh, which can be really helpful. And engagement leads to feelings of inclusion and provides all kinds of resources also for leadership development. So I really hope that you'll keep that in mind. Uh, you know, there's something there for everybody with over 500 uh, student organizations. Now, I mentioned study abroad. Again, I'm going to push that. Uh, we have study abroad programs all over the world in Central and South America and Europe and Asia and even in Africa, some places. Um, and uh, some of these are as short as three weeks. For example, our anthropology students go down every summer, all the this summer, of course, but every summer typically to Belize to uh, Earth ancient Mayan civilizations and artifacts. Um, three weeks at a time, uh, some of our uh, programs in Berlin and other places in Germany are three week programs. There's our full semesters uh, or over the full summer. So, for example, our Urbino uh, study abroad program in Italy is a full semester where you take courses for the semester in Urbino, Italy. You get credit for those courses in your degree program, and you pay residential fees here at UTSA. Some of the uh, tuition I might mention, we do uh, eliminate some of the fees that you would ordinarily pay because you're not gonna be using some of the services if you're not on our campus here. Um, now, uh, so it's an excellent opportunity. I know that uh, the, you know the tuition would be the same as if you were in San Antonio taking classes. But you're obviously going to have to have some transportation and some lodging costs and some additional uh, expenses for, say, museum um, uh, entry fees and those kinds of things. And we do have some financial aid opportunities through the uh, International Programs Office as well as some scholarships to help fund those opportunities. So, again, I really encourage you to think very, uh, care very uh, strongly about a study abroad opportunity. College of Liberal and Fine Arts offers more study abroad opportunities than any other college, uh, mainly because we have so many different culture-based uh, disciplines. Now, with that, I'd like to stop and take a quick break and check in with Angie about you know, the people maybe we have and if there's any particular questions that have been asked at this point that I might be able to answer. Hi, Dr. Lovett. So, we have around 28 participants. Um, Welcome, everybody. 
We don't have any questions right now in the chat box, but I did want to remind everyone, if you do want to ask a question, um, if you just click on the screen, anywhere on the screen, um, there should be down at the bottom a little like bubble that pops up. If you click on that, the chat room will open up and you can ask any questions that you might have. Um, but as of now, there's no questions, so we'll just go ahead and continue with the presentation. Okay, and I hope that my voice is uh, loud enough for everybody to hear. Um, if you're having any kind of trouble, uh, I go ahead and let Angie know in the chat room and I'll do what I can to try to, to uh, solve that issue. Well, at, at this point then, I'd like to start talking about our nine different disciplines, uh, and I'd like to start with anthropology. I'll go alphabetically. Uh, anthropology has a number of different basic subfields, including cultural anthropology. So again, you know, um, <clears throat> our students going down and studying ancient Mayan civilizations in Belize, linguistic anthropology. Linguistics is a uh, discipline that studies obviously language, language development, language history, uh, and so forth. And we have several other areas, including our English department and our modern languages and uh, literatures department, to some extent communication that also do linguistics work. Um, so you'll see that as well. Biological anthropology, so we have some faculty members who study primate populations in New Guinea and things like that, and environmental anthropology. Uh, archaeology is a, is a related discipline, which is now housed in our anthropology department. And so I mentioned Belize and other summer field camps in Arizona and so forth. So Belize is not the only summer uh, field camp that's available for archaeological uh, work. Um, and so that's a big part of the anthropology department. They also are basically running the Center for Archaeological Research. This is a, 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 a fully um, uh, operational repository of artifacts that's located on our West Campus. Um, they've been very involved in excavations of the Alamo area, uh, Alamo Plaza and so forth, looking for, uh, you know, our um, the uh, uh, Mexican-American uh, uh, campaigns and so forth for our San Antonio uh, 300 anniversary celebration. I've put their website up there and I've done that because they also hire students to do work in the Center for Archaeological Research, otherwise known as CAR. So we have student workers uh, and also they offer this uh, archaeology camp, archaeology and the science of skeletons. So that's another thing that I'll make a plug for is that there are many, many opportunities for students to get employment on campus um, through work study, through uh, research laboratories, centers and institutes um, like CAR. And so that's a really good opportunity for you to think about because if you work on campus, that can really make you know, life a lot easier uh, working in between and around your classes, not having to, to do as much transportation and parking and so forth. So I would encourage that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> next discipline is art and art history. Uh, many people are familiar with art history through a television program called Antiques Roadshow, <clears throat> where you have a lot of people bringing in uh, any kind of relic and artifact of art, uh, watches and ceramic pieces and paintings and this and that, and then they have appraisers, you know, trying to give you some idea of, uh, of how much they're worth. But our art history folks are also doing work in Mexico and Central America um, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, interpreting uh, uh, art hieroglyphics and other kinds of artifacts in terms. So, so it's it, again, there's a, some linguistics, but it's ancient kind of uh, cultural, um, also cultural archaeology and anthropology in a sense. So there's a big crossover. Um, I think I saw something on the screen about related miners, and I'm going to get to the museum studies miner uh, in a, in a few minutes. But I would uh, remind everybody that. All of our disciplines have minors, so you can minor in art history, you can minor in art, you can minor, there's several in music that I'll be pointing out, communication, English, we have, we have minors for all of our different programs that you can not, uh, and also you can do double majors. If you kind of really know what you want to do and you start off, you can take electives in one area that will uh, be major requirements, and then those become electives for a different discipline, and so you can sort of double count many of those uh, courses and graduate with a, a double degree, in other words, two different bachelor's degrees, um, often with maybe as, as little as a one additional semester uh, of courses, or maybe even no additional semesters if you take courses every summer. 
and we do offer quite a bit of online uh, opportunities during the summer. So if you're not able to live in San Antonio or the dorms, if you're from out of town and you can go home or somewhere else during the summer, we offer a rich uh, a variety of, of uh, fully online courses during the summer. Ordinarily, this summer, of course, all of our courses have to be online because of the COVID-19 uh, situation, but uh, normally we offer quite a bit. So our art and art history, we do a lot of different kinds of uh, creative activities, the printmaking, ceramics. We have a large ceramics lab out on our West Campus, and uh, also they do a lot of metal and other types of sculptures out there, painting and drawing and photography. And uh, we have also new media, which is, you know, all kinds of reality, artificial reality, uh, all the sort of new and emerging media that, that in this case is being applied to creative works. Uh, we have a new faculty member uh, named Sarah Lassley, who's heading up that effort. Um, and um, she has her degrees from Yale. She worked with Martha Stewart for a while. So really, really fascinating background. So that's really a new and emerging area. We have a lot of other new media work going in different other departments that I'll get to as well. I mentioned our West Campus facilities, uh, the Mind Museum Studies. Um, we uh, Anthropology majors are interested in that. History majors are interested in that, um, and uh, some other disciplines as well. So, in that minor, we have internships available at the Institute of Texan Cultures. And uh, you may or may not know that we have three campuses at UTSA. Our main campus out uh, on the north side of 1604 near Interstate 10. We have our downtown campus, and the Institute of Texan Cultures is a third branch of our campus. We it is a Smithsonian affiliate and it is a world class uh, museum. And so a lot of our students will work as docents there doing internships. We also have internships at the Witte Museum, the San Antonio Museum of Art, other galleries. Um, and of course, we have our own art galleries uh, on campus. There are several art galleries on campus where students exhibit their work. And we have a Blue Star Art Gallery complex, which is down on the south side in the historic district. Of San Antonio, where students and faculty members also have an opportunity to um, <clears throat> exhibit their work. I mentioned the museum studies minor already. Um, and again, the, the art students are required to do a lot of juried exhibitions. Um, and so not only do they learn how to do the creative work, but they learn how to actually create and, and orchestrate and exhibit, which is far more complicated than most people realize to get everything set up in, an, in a gallery. Uh, the way that the uh, audience members are going to flow through the exhibits, how the exhibits are ordered and structured, uh, the lighting of the, uh, you know, in these days, the art exhibits are not just one medium, they're multimedia type production. So it's really a fascinating uh, thing. And uh, when you come to campus, I hope you'll be able to come and tour uh, in person. Um, I encourage you to see the uh, art exhibits on campus. They're really fascinating. Our students do just amazing types of work. Switch now to communication, my home discipline. We have, uh, in addition to communication studies, which is the main bachelor's degree that we offer that is in basic, you know, communication skills, a small group communication, organizational communication, interpersonal communication, leadership uh, development, so forth. We also have other specialized concentrations that are full degree programs, one in public relations, which is a very growing field if you look at the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics data, as well as the Texas Workforce Commission data. And that's another resource that I would encourage you to explore in terms of the growth areas for uh, careers that are line, aligned with uh, liberal and fine arts. So public relations is a concentration, digital communication. This is, again, a new media area where we're doing uh, desktop publishing design layout, some graphic design. Uh, digital uh, web or website development, digital video production, uh, and then we have a health communication concentration. Um, and of course, that focuses on everything from dyadic doctor to patient and nurse practitioner communications, the small group communications within uh, uh, an oncology group to larger uh, communication issues at the organizational level, for example, the coordination. Um, of the Baptist healthcare system or the Methodist healthcare system. And believe me, there's a lot of that action going on with this pandemic right now, because as you may know, uh, many uh, um, surgery, elective surgeries have been uh, postponed uh, as a uh, result of COVID. 
and the Baptist healthcare uh, system, for example, has to meet regularly with a board of directors to approve exceptions to that to see if they're life threatening enough to be to override the governor's prohibition on those. Um, and then, of course, uh, lining up with the public relations campaigns, uh, health communication is also large scale public health uh, improvement campaigns to uh, help reduce uh, the uh, diabetes or teenage pregnancy issues. Um, so t uh, trying to, to get uh, large scale campaigns to improve people's uh, health behaviors and so forth. And of course, those then become large scale public relations. <clears throat> um, a student organizations uh, that we focus on the public relations society of America, and they have a student run PR firm. Uh, there's an advertising club. Um, the advertising courses specifically are taught in the College of Business, but we do a lot of advertising work and communication, and, and we are the uh, sponsor for the advertising club uh, through the American Advertising Federation. And they do they enter competitions every year uh, with big clients like this year is is uh, Adobe. Um, and interestingly enough, UTSA, I think, is still the only four year uh, public college uh, in the state of Texas that is an Adobe campus, meaning that we have all of the Adobe products available to all of our faculty members and all of our students free of charge. So uh, the, the university has a, a partnership with Adobe where we have all of their products uh, in the creative suite uh, that are available to our students. I'd also here like to put in a big plug for our nationally ranked debate team. I've given you their uh, website address as well here. You don't have to be a communication major to be in the debate team. If you were interested in debate, had some experience in high school, but you're still engineering or something, that's fine. Um, and we, we regularly do really well against teams like Harvard and Yale and so forth. So I would encourage you to uh, uh, investigate that as well. Our next department is English. Um, they have both creative professional writing and literature studies. Uh, so you can do a concentration in creative writing, poetry, fiction, or in professional writing, um, meaning all kinds of different writing for professional occupations, uh, guidebooks, instructions, annual reports. Um, you know, there's a, there's a variety of uh, different kinds of writing that organizations need, and there's a great uh, deal of career opportunities, any career opportunities in that area. Um, they also, their students are uh, run something called the Sagebrush Review. This is a literary journal that's published by the students um, that includes fiction, nonfiction, poetry, art, and photography. I've given you their website here. And uh, again, I remind you, if, you're, if you don't have time to write all these down, uh, we are recording this session and you'll be able to access it uh, at any time later on and advance through here and find these uh, websites or you can email me again and I will certainly send them to you. Um, <clears throat> this is a really good opportunity for students to basically be involved in old business type where they have to sell advertising and so forth to uh, make this work and then decide, you know, editorially what's going to be included and how to lay it out and design that. So it's an excellent uh, career preparation opportunity. At this point, I'd also like to uh, make sure that you understand that we also have a student newspaper, the Paisano, and it is an independent student newspaper, meaning that it's not funded by or censored by the University of Texas at San Antonio. So I think that's a really great uh, opportunity for students to have uh, the freedom of the press. They can say whatever they want about UTSA without being censored, but they do have to sell advertising um, and they have a, a whole uh, building that they're a, a part of a building just off campus where they do all our operations. And so you can you be on the business side, you can be on the creative side, um, artwork, cartoons, you can be on the new, straight news reporting. And of course they do feature writing and they color, cover sports entertainment as well as hard news. So that student uh, newspaper organization, the Paisana was another great uh, opportunity. The uh, main courses and, and uh, organization for that Urbino program over in Italy, as I mentioned, is run through the English department or a variety of courses. That doesn't mean all of the courses that they that they offer in Urbino are English courses, but it's primarily organized through that department. They also run a London course in the summer, and they have a really fascinating Shakespeare residency where uh, 
uh, actors from the London stage come every semester. And not only do they put on productions, uh, you know, plays, um, Shakespeare plays, obviously, uh, for a very, very low cost. I think it's like five dollars or something like that for students. Um, but they also go to classes and do workshops on on acting, uh, language, um, and so forth. So that's a really uh, amazing opportunity that we offer pretty much every summer. Let me talk a little bit about history. Um, our history department focuses on themes of empire, states, and borders. Um, this is a, a, a not so commonly known pre-law choice for students. The, uh, there is no rule or curricular uh, restriction on what you study as a pre-law choice, uh, nor as a pre-med choice, which I'll get to in a few minutes. So many of our history students are pre-law students, in other words, preparing uh, for uh, entry into law school um, because of the critical thinking and problem solving and, and other kinds of skills that they need and, and analysis of, of text and argument and so forth, because after all, um, laying out history is simply an argument for what you believe the truth and the facts to be. Uh, that's also one of the more funded uh, degree programs, both at the undergraduate and graduate degree, thanks to uh, the NOW Foundation. That's N-A-U, by the way, not N-O-W, N-A-U, the NOW Foundation, uh, has a pretty robust set of scholarships that our students can get for history studies. Uh, there's a separate degree in history in American studies, so you can focus specifically on American history, although obviously uh, history, uh, you know, they teach historical themes of all over the world. Um, and often students are, are able to or can get the te uh, teacher certification in social studies. So uh, many of our disciplines, including uh, English, including communication and others, uh, have certification programs that you work through uh, in conjunction with the College of Education and Human Development to uh, get certified to teach in elementary and secondary education, history, social studies, other areas. <clears throat> Those students are, and some faculty are also working on digital content for the historical site information for our 300th anniversary celebration. Again, you know, the, the excavations and, and the re reimagining of the Alamo Plaza here in San Antonio, if you've heard about it. Um, you know, they're really trying to restore that whole area to more of its natural state of when, when the Alamo battle actually happened and the, the missions and so forth that started all of that. Um, <clears throat> And so, you know, there's these kiosks that are being designed. So there's a, a cannon or something that has buried and been excavated or some other artifacts or a part of a site. And there'll be these digital kiosks that you can uh, click on some something and get either uh, visual information or textual information or even audio information. And so our history students are working on historical content as well. So a lot of really practical applications are happening in our different disciplines. I think I'll stop again and see if Angie has any questions that have come in that I might answer at this point before I move along into our uh, next set of disciplines. Hi, yeah, so um, I know you talked a little bit about study abroad, but um, Grace did have a couple uh, questions on um, study abroad programs for the art and fine arts program specifically and where she could find that information. Um, and another question that came in too was, um, I don't know, Moonshine4482 asked, what are some suggestions of minors that will complement my cultural anthropology degree? Okay, well, uh, let me start with the first one, the art and art history department. I know that they do some study abroad programs down in Mexico um, the, in art history. As far as the fine art area, I'm not really sure, but if uh, if if you're if you either send me an email at steven.levitt at utsa.edu, I'll put that slide back up with my email address um, so that I can know how to contact you. I'll definitely put you in touch with um, either our department chair, Dr. Greg Elliott, or uh, Dr. Scott Shearer, Dr. Libby Rowe, uh, Dr. Teresa Ekman. There's a number of faculty members who would know how to really answer that question more thoroughly. You might also go to our international programs website at UTSA. Um, if you go to the directory and, and uh, look, uh, click on I uh, in the directory for uh, offices, international programs will come up um, and, um, and there's a, a, a 
learning abroad uh, a section in there where I, I'm pretty sure you probably get a very thorough listing of all the approved study abroad programs. So there's a couple of ways to get more information about that. Minors that would uh, support cultural anthropology, obviously museum studies would be a natural fit. I think English would be a natural fit. I think art history would be a natural fit for those. Um, it really kind of just depends on, on your interest. So uh, you can talk with your professional advisor in our advising center about that, because if you're in anthropology, uh, you're gonna be in the social science advising center and they know those disciplines pretty well. But I would also encourage you to uh, take a look at the actual department websites. If you go to colfa, C-O-L-F-A dot U-T-S-A dot E-D-U, um, you can click on departments and there's a whole list of departments there and you can explore what they have to offer. That's also a good place to look uh, about the career opportunities in those disciplines because all of our different departments have career information on their websites. It gives you a good idea of you know, the kind of careers that their majors are, are getting. And they also list uh, their intern opportunities as well. So, um, you know, there's, there's, there's just a variety of pieces you can put together to kind of customize your degree to really uh, hone in on, on the different kinds of skills and backgrounds that you really want, depending on your career opportunities. And again, I'm gonna plug Career, the Career Center again because the College of Liberal and Fine Arts has two dedicated uh, career counselors. They're both named Sarah. So I like to refer them as Sarah one and Sarah two, T-O-O. -O. <laughs> um, and they are really knowledgeable about uh, our disciplines and careers. And they're another good resource for helping you think through, uh, you know, what kind of minor. And you may be able to put together kind of a customized minor um, because even though it says you've got to take this nine hours and this six hours, you know, and choose from these courses, there's always exceptions. And so uh, the departments can, can accept other courses uh, if it makes sense to you and your career opportunities to fulfill those degree requirements in a minor. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And again, I really encourage you if you need to, to communicate with me more to write down my email address at the end of the session. And I'd be happy to follow up with you and put you in touch with all kinds of different, uh, different people that can really help you out. Anything else, Angie? Um, there is another couple questions that came in. Um, I don't know if you wanted to answer them right now or at the end of the presentation. Uh, maybe we better wait to the end because I see it's 1042 and I don't want to run out of time and not be able to talk about the other disciplines. So um, we'll move. I promise I'll get to you. And again, uh, please email me. Uh, with your questions if you don't get them answered today and if you'd like to talk on the phone i'd be very happy to do that just give me a phone number and uh, we will continue this discussion uh, beyond today's session <clears throat> i have this quote up here that i hope you've uh, read by now probably and that introduces our new uh, next discipline in uh, department modern languages and literatures um we have one of the largest offerings of languages in the state uh, you know, everything from Arabic to Chinese, Japanese, Russian, Korean, Spanish, Italian, French. I couldn't begin to list them all off. Um, so you study many different languages. If you major in liberal, one of our de degree programs in liberal and fine arts, you are going to be required to study at least two semesters of a foreign language. We think it's that important to uh, broaden your horizons of both culture and language. And I don't know about anybody else with this experience, but I learned a lot more about the English language by studying Spanish than I remember from grammar school and grade school and in and, and high school on um, my, my grammar and English classes. I learned a lot about English by studying Spanish. So um, that's something that we just think is really important. Uh, they also have courses in comparative literature. So again, they team up with the English department and the history department uh, to cross list these kind of courses um, that focus on all kinds of literatures from around the world. Many of those courses are part of the core curriculum. And then uh, a, a very burgeoning area in translation studies with the global economy uh, and other uh, reasons. Translation studies is becoming very big business, even for our government, uh, you know, the FBI, the CIA, uh, there's all kinds of different uh, uh, um, career opportunities in translation studies. So we have uh, graduate programs as well as undergraduate focus on that. We also teach digital film production. Those are MES and that stands for media studies. So the modern languages and literatures department has a little uh, video uh, film production studio 
in the um, McKinney's Humanities building uh, where they do digital film production courses. Um, in addition to the ones that we do in communication in digital video production. And then, of course, the uh, new media area in the art department as well as doing things with digital film and so forth. So there's a variety of ways. And I should say, it's not going to be here if you start school this coming year, but we are in the process of beginning to design a new digital media major uh, that will come along soon that will pull a lot of this stuff together and really try to expand it with all these new emerging um, technologies. <clears throat> Here you can see that studying a second language has been well documented to improve your skills and grades in math and English and increase college entrance exam scores all the way through the, uh, the S, SATs, ACTs, as well as the MCATs and LCATs, the, or LSATs, the, the entrance exams for medical school and law school. And that's just because of the, the, the logic and the, and the skill, the, the critical thinking and, and problem solving skills in translation of those languages. Uh, really increased those kind of uh, <clears throat> both right and left brain uh, activities. You can see that they offer a great number of study abroad programs from modern languages and literatures because of all the people who are from these different countries who teach these languages as well as others. So that's a very rich uh, area. Music is our next department. Um, we have a very vibrant music program. Uh, music majors are only admitted after they successfully pass an audition. So there's a very high caliber of musicians, vocalists, composition writers, and so forth in our music program because they're only admitted after auditions. Um, that doesn't mean that if you're interested in music, that you must major in music uh, to, to be involved. And I'll get to that in a minute. But before I do that, you can see that we've got uh, concentrations in music education. So again, certification to teach music in Texas public schools. Music marketing is a really big uh, business now where you take the music core classes, but then take business economics, accounting and technology and nonprofit arts management to uh, you know, promote, do music promotion, uh, concert promotion, a uh, lot of that kind of thing. Obviously there's uh, uh, emphasis in composition where students are actually writing uh, new music, and then performance, uh, professionally and or teach private lessons. So there's a bunch of different uh, foci in music. Um, there's a more general Bachelor of Arts in Music, which is a more liberal arts focus with an emphasis on music and flexibility to choose from a variety of music courses. Um, and uh, Dr. Stacy Davis is the uh, associate chair of the music department, and she would be an excellent resource for you to get more information about these differences. And I'd be happy to put you in touch with her if you're interested in that. Um, and again, I'll put my email address up at the end. Um, there's many different ensembles. So all UTSA students are welcome to participate in these ensembles. So even if you're not gonna major in music, uh, you can still play music. Uh, instrumentalists, there's the marching band, Sosa, uh, all kinds of different, um, string quartets and, and wind wood quartets and, and all kinds of different uh, ensembles that you can take for one hour credits just as electives uh, or volunteer um, orchestra mariachi we've got uh, for vocalists there's three different choirs and then of course there's a lyric theater we do not have a major in theater at utsa that's something that's on the long um, horizon uh, there is a fine arts performing center that's on our campus master plan um, and our new Dean of College of Liberal and Fine Arts, Dr. Martin Camacho, is going to begin his duties May 18, and he's coming from um, Midwestern State University up in um, Wichita Falls, where he was able to uh, build one of these there. So we're really uh, excited to have him come with his expertise so that we can have a true performing arts center on our campus. Um, where we end, but currently we're still doing some operas and some musical theater opportunities in music. I mentioned minors, um, there's a music and minor, but jazz studies, music marketing is also a minor, music technology, where you would do a lot of audio work to, uh, um, I guess, edit and, and digitize and, and do uh, electronic types of music, I suppose. And then we have a minor in dance as well. Let me finish off with our last two degree programs, uh, philosophy and classics. Um, 
They do a lot of different work in metaphysics, epistemology, moral philosophy, ethics. Uh, you can read uh, these wide range of other areas in logic, um, philosophy of science, cognitive science, aesthetics. This is a very popular pre-law program because we do offer the logic courses through there. And, uh, you know, they learn uh, logical premises and, and how to create and structure arguments. Um, and then, you know, looking at ancient political wisdom um, as well as modern uh, continental philosophy. So there's a wide range of areas there. Um, and they are some of the uh, most prolific research publishing faculty that we have on campus. Um, so we're really proud of our philosophy uh, program. That degree also includes a degree in classics and humanities. And so that's a study of the ancient world from art history. So again, you see the crossover here with classics. Um, which would be another one of those uh, for the uh, student or prospect who asked the question about um, a minor that would complement um, um, <clears throat> minor that would complement um, um, anthropology and cultural anthropology. Um, so um, they've got anthropology, linguistics, philosophy, literary studies. Um, and so forth. And that's where we also teach the Latin and Greek courses. So if you're looking for Latin and Greek there, it's not in the modern languages and literatures uh, program, but it rather in philosophy and classics, those also fulfill uh, part of the uh, core curriculum requirements if you're interested in that. Let's see if I can get this to work. That department also houses a Bachelor of Arts in Medical Humanities. And Medical Humanities, um, is a pre-med program. Many people think that you have to study biology in order to, uh, to uh, go to med school. That's not true, but our BA in medical humanities does have all the prerequisites in the sciences uh, that you would need to go to pre-med. But modern medical training understands that it's not just the physical side of the human well-being, but it has to be the emotional and the spiritual um, and the human side that, that leads to well-being. So, Medical humanities is a very growing field in the United States right now. Baylor uh, University has a big humanities program. Um, the State University of New York has uh, a big clearinghouse of medical humanities. So that's a, a pre-med program that's growing very fast. So you take uh, the prerequisites for med school along with a lot of social science and art uh, or humanities type courses. Finally, political science and geography department. Um, they have degrees in political science and geography and environmental sustainability. They also have a Bachelor of Arts degree in global affairs, politics and law. So again, many use that as a pre-law program, teacher certification uh, program. Very, very uh, active right now with uh, China relations, as you can imagine. Um, and our department chair, uh, Dr. John Taylor, specializes in China. So he's been uh, in the news media uh, lately. Uh, our Frankfurt study abroad course in globalization is very popular. And I'd also like to make a plug for our mock three day United Nations assembly. Uh, Dr. Matthias Hofferberth runs that. Here's their Facebook uh, address. And that mock three day United Nations assembly is basically students from all over campus um, can, uh, come and become uh, delegates for a, a country. And then they have to develop certain kinds of platforms and, and, uh, so forth to uh, try to uh, develop policy and so forth uh, regarding uh, global international issues. So um, that's a really popular uh, extracurricular activity um, that's offered through that department. They also do uh, a bunch of GIS graphical information systems uh, work there. We have a GIS lab um, that focuses a lot on not, not just quantitative, but qualitative and hum humanities type data to do all kinds of fascinating uh, mapping that enhance our understanding of, of uh, cultural phenomena, uh, uh, human movement and behavior and so forth. Um, and we are in the process of uh, having a GIS certificate program approved right now. So that should be available for students when they arrive on campus next fall. That is uh, the rundown uh, in this short a period of time as I have of all of our different majors. And I know I just skimmed the surface of what we have to offer, but I'd encourage you again to write down my email address uh, and email me. And I'll definitely put you in touch with whoever uh, needs to answer 
questions in a really thorough and educated manner. And if you'd like to talk by phone, I certainly welcome you to give me a telephone number. I'm not sure how much time we have left. Looks like we have about five or six minutes. I'm not sure if I saw Dr. John Taylor uh, in the room or not, but is there anything else? Uh, I, I'm not able to see the chat right now. Angie, can you help me out with that? Yes, um, Dr. Taylor is on the chat and he just um, sent out his information as well. <laughs> Hi, John. Howdy. Hey, I'm happy to, happy to talk to anybody if they need information on any of our programs in political science and geography. Great. I really appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you. You bet. Uh, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions because it's one of our one of our really popular programs, and they're they're really doing a lot of great work over there. So I can't say enough about uh, Dr. Taylor and his faculty members over there. Thank you. I say that with all sincerity. I mean, we, we our faculty members are are, are 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 really world class people here at UTSA. You know, we're a we're a top tier university, and we hire the best faculty members from all over the world, and we have the best staff because we all have to continue. Like Angie, you know, we all do a work all the time to keep this place uh, our reputation going, and we rely on our students to help us maintain that that uh, top tier reputation as well, because the value of your UTSA degree depends on the education you're getting. So it's a team effort between the faculty, the staff, the administration, and you students. So we'll be proud to have you as Roadrunners if you come in the fall. What else, Angie? <clears throat> so um, I know we only have a couple minutes to maybe answer maybe one question, <laughs> um, but like Dr. Lovett said, if you, um, didn't get your answers question, but please make sure to email him um, and he's more than happy to help you. Um, but if you, there is one question, uh, what are some good majors for someone wanting to get a master's in education? Well, that I, I'd have to be honest to say, well, you know, we have a college of education and human development. And so they do a lot of the, you know, uh, interdisciplinary, uh, studies work uh, and teacher, ter teacher certification, um, child development courses and all those kind of things. So if you really wanna get a master's degree in education, you'd probably wanna get an undergraduate degree in education as well. But uh, some of our disciplines like modern languages and literatures or history could also prepare you for uh, master or graduate work in education. I suppose political science and philosophy. I mean, almost any of our of our disciplines could lead in that direction, depending on what kind of graduate work you wanted to do in education. Because of course, the College of Education is very broad as well. So they have master's programs in, in social work and other areas uh, that would come out of there as well as just, uh, you know, like um, school administration and kind of things like that, that you would get graduate degrees in. So um, if you want to email me that question, I can certainly put you in touch with, uh, our, our Dean of, of Education, um, and she could probably give you a lot more information about that. So, and Angie, I'm, I'm not sure what your schedule is. I'm happy to st uh, stay on for just a few more minutes if there are some additional questions. Yeah, yeah, if people want to stay on, that's fine. We can um, answer a few more questions that came in. Um, is there a specific photography minor, or is it just an art minor? Um, it would be an art minor. But then you take the photography courses, uh, they, they have a sequence of courses in, 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 in printmaking, ceramics, and so forth. If you go to uh, the uh, UTSA catalog or the degree requirements um, for art and art history, if you go to colfa.utsa.edu um, and click on departments, you can get a lot of information about art and art history. But there's a sequence of courses that go from the basic site, basic ceramics, basic printmaking, basic photography. Uh, than to more intermediate and advanced courses in each of those kind of fine arts area. Now we are doing both digital and analog photography, which is really nice. We have a really state of the art, probably as far as I've been told by Dr. Elliot, uh, who had a former life as a general contractor. So I think he knows what he's talking about in terms of the, uh, um, what's the right word, the, the quality of the construction and facilities that they have. They have a brand new dark room um, which I've had an opportunity to see, which is really fascinating for doing, uh, you know, analog type photography. So um, 
if you minor in art, I'm sure you can focus on one of those areas. Okay, um, so Bracey Jimenez asked, how do you declare a minor in music? How do I set up for the interview that's involved? Okay, I do not think that, you, uh, I'm pretty sure you don't have to audition or interview to declare a minor in music. Those are open to all students. So we have, uh, when you come to campus, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, you probably won't <laughs> this summer. When you go through your freshman orientation program, uh, you will work with a pre-advising and an advising session. And at that time you can declare majors, but you can also make your intention to declare that minor. Um, and then you, you'll, you'll get a, a degree plan in, that, 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 that starts to form up uh, you know, starting with what you're going to start with your first semester and then eventually your advisor will help you put together a four year plan of action to keep you on track to graduate on time. Um, and at that time, that that degree that that degree map, so to speak, will then include what you would need to do for that music minor or any other minor. Um, Mackenzie asked, I'm pursuing a degree in English, but I want to do something in journalism while keeping my job opportunities open. Would you recommend a major in English or journalism? How is the journalism program? We do not have a journalism program at UTSA. That is a story that goes back to when I first arrived on campus in 1991, and we were told by the state of Texas that we could not develop <laughs> journalism. We already had too many programs. Uh, in journalism in the state of Texas, that was at the time that the, uh, the San Antonio went from a two daily newspaper town, the one daily newspaper town. So when I was charged with developing a degree program in communication, I was told I could not do journalism. Now, with that said, I also mentioned the uh, student independent student newspaper, the Paisano, which does all of their own reporting, writing, editing. Uh, so you can get journalism experience by at the Paisano. You can take English classes that focus on feature writing and some other kinds of things. I would also say that San Antonio College has a really good journalism program. So you can take some courses in journalism at the community college and transfer those in to UTSA as electives. So work with your advisor on that because there's a maximum number of community college hours that you can transfer in um, and still meet our residency requirements. In other words, the minimum number of students courses you must take at UTSA to get a degree from our university. So that's the best advice I have for you in terms of journalism. Um, and I can also put you in touch with uh, our new uh, um, uh, senior communications coordinator, uh, Tricia Schwenison, who has a long career working in journalism here at, uh, in San Antonio, including the San Antonio Business Journal. And she would be a wealth of advice for you. Okay, so we have one last question. Uh, will there be another chat today about the Global Affairs degree or website where I can find more information about that degree? I think if John Taylor is still here, he can probably here. do that. <laughs> John Taylor is the, is the chair of that department, so I'll ask him uh, to answer that. <laughs> well, I, I would say to Anna, if you'll just email me, um, I can chat with you by email and I can get you more information. I can also forward information on to Dr. Matthias Hoffenberg, who helps to run our Global Affairs program. And if, uh, yeah, email Dr. Uh, it's john.taylor at utsa.edu, J-O-N-T-A-Y-L-O. I think his name probably is showing up on your screen. It's showing up. It should be. It's J-O-N.T-A-Y-L-O-R at utsa.edu. If somehow you get lost, you should have my email address by now. So. There you go. And I'll, I'll put you in touch. So that's all the questions. It's been my yeah. pleasure to be with you today. And thank you so much for joining us. I wish it could have been in person. Again, my heart goes out to any of you who are uh, experiencing difficulties during this time. But I hope you and all of your loved ones are, are very well. And I look forward to meeting you one time in person. So take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your UTSA day and your weekend. And thank you, Angie. Yes, of course. Thank you all for coming. Um, make sure that you fill out the survey um, uh, as well if you want to enter to win. Um, but we'll just go ahead and close this um, this session. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Angie. And thank you, John, for coming.